Hello everybody, welcome to Build Fly Go. So, just a quick update on where we are with the airplane and the wiring. We've done a lot of work on avionics right now. You'll see some wires falling out of the front of the, uh, the uh, firewall pass-through there, but let's come around and take a look at the inside of the airplane. The majority of the wiring at this point, the vast majority of the wiring at this point is done. There's a lot of cleanup left to do. Um, if you look at the panel, uh, most of the wiring is in place. I need to clean things up a little bit, straighten a couple of things out, uh, deal with, you know, like clean up some zip ties and maybe some lacing here and there, tighten some things down. But everything is basically in and pinned at this point. There's a couple of loose wires for things that we've discovered as as we went along, mistakes, mistakes were made. <laughs> um, and so, so a couple of little things that we had to, to re, rerun um, wires, they were maybe too short or we didn't run them to the spot that uh, turned out to be a good idea, um, things like that. But wiring is in. Uh, one of the things that we're working on right now is figuring out the oxygen system. You know, we're using the Mountain High uh, built-in system. The head goes here and there's these little distributor blocks. For the rear passengers, they're gonna be on the back of the, the sort of the center console. Um, they look like this. We made a little bracket for them and they just go on the back of the center console. For the front seats, we're trying to figure out where to put them. Um, I'd like to put them on the side here because it's out of the way, but I don't want them too close to the panel because I don't want dangly, I don't like dangly things anywhere. Uh, so headset jacks are here. Um, so I didn't want to have them here because it would be an issue. So we're trying to figure out the, where they go over here. One of the things we've done is there are these side panels that go here, metal side panels. And as we're trying to figure out where these things go in here, I didn't want to cut this up or have to guess. So we just 3D printed, uh, I guess they're not frameless, they're centerless versions of the, these parts in a couple of different sizes. This is the stock. A couple of different sizes so that we can place them here and then sort of float this piece around. Float this piece around and figure out sort of where it's gonna go, where the connectors are gonna go, if they're gonna be in the way, if they're gonna be visible, right? Like, can I do this? For example, will that fit? Will these connectors fit? Um, and you can really get an idea of what's going to work. One of the things, this was our original plan, and one of the things we discovered looking down this way is the this connector right here, the, that DB9, is actually too close to the surface of this. So this wouldn't work, <laughs> which is a real shame because I wanted it this way because it, it felt like the best way to do it. So right now I'm printing different sizes of these, like for different lengths, just to see can I put them... Can I put this vertically like this and still hide all of the connections? Uh, the printer right now is going and I just did another half inch and I also did one that's uh, three quarters of an inch lower than this. Keeping this same height over here. So that's that. Um, you'll see sort of how we handle our, our wiring here down the sides, uh, little sticky pads. I don't like these these uh, zip tie um, pads usually come with a foam backing on them. I find that that foam backing falls off uh, pretty much under any like heat cycle load. They're they're not great. So we remove the foam backing, we scuff it, and we use uh, E6000 glue. Um, and this has worked pretty well for us. It's what we used in the RV9, and it, none of our stickies have have fallen off. So we're routing these and then they go through the side. Some of them go into here, right? So the lowest one goes into underneath the front seats. And that's for um, the buttons on the sticks, things like that. Um, we're gonna have a couple more in here as well. And then this way, uh, we've been really careful to separate electrical stuff from signal stuff so that they're not running right next to each other. Um, it's less obvious here than it is on the other side. But uh, you'll see some of the antennas here, the, the static tube. Um, the top one is just going to right here. These are the headset jacks for the rear passenger seats. 
we think we're going to put them right here. Haven't quite figured it out yet. We'll probably make another 3D printed little bracket here just to figure out where they're going to go. And, uh, and then two tubes on this side, two tubes on that side, and we also have a tube on each side of the tunnel over here. Uh, if I was doing this again, I would probably add one more tube on each side here, make it three going down that way. These are pretty stuffed. Um, we can probably still fit tiny things in here, but that's about it. Like they're, they're full. <laughs> uh, over here, this is the flap um, torque tube and the flap motor over here, just a stock flap mo motor for us. We didn't, uh, we got our motor before vans switched to the new motor and we didn't want to go with the, the aftermarket motor. Uh, the stock one has worked fine in the nine for 900 hours now, so we're happy with that. Um, so some of the some of the wires come down into this area uh, for the flat position sensor right here. This is a pretty common installation of the flat position sensor. And also we're doing the fly LEDs lights and it includes a control box. You've probably seen that uh, my post about 3D printing a box for it. Uh, this is just normal 3D printed box, no big deal. Um, and we figured this was a decent spot to put it because we didn't want it in front of the panel. We just wanted it somewhere, you know, sort of out of the way. So the box is here, um, connections, uh, power, ground, etc. go to the front from here and then out to the wings on each side, right? The strobes go that way and then that way. And there is a spot where they go through here. Um, I was feeling really finicky about, right, because this is a moving part. Um, so we put a sticky right there and that's just going to be zip tied out of the way. The sticky is still curing. Um, there, it's going to be zip tied out of the way. Uh, there are wires here for the uh, center console as well. Still figuring this out. Not sure that I'm comfortable with how close it is to certain things. We're sorting it out. Uh, experimental. <laughs> um, and then on this side, that's actually the electrical for the seat heats. There are seat heats for all four seats, seat heaters for all four seats. Um, they're the same ones that we used in the uh, same system, I think, that we used in the RV9. Um, there's nothing fancy about them. They take power and ground and there's a switch. Uh, haven't figured out exactly where the switch is going to go yet. Sorting that out. Um, but I didn't want to run four individual wires uh, from from the from the battery to that. Uh, so we ran one, I believe that's a number eight. Um, you know, you do the math, AC 4313, to figure out the size of the wire. And then there's a fuse block here. It is also a fuse in the back as well, so in case the, the number eight shorts. Uh, I did the same thing for the uh, grounds, similar deal, just a number eight for the grounds, and then there's one ground block right there. There is an antenna here, um, down here. This is the COM2 antenna, it's the bottom COM antenna. Nothing special there. Um, what else is in here? Oh, you'll notice the, um, the overhead. There are some wires here for lighting on the overhead as well. We are looking at actually putting some of these little puck, whoops, these little puck antennas up there um, because this is fiberglass, right? So it should be electrically transparent. We should be fine with antennas there. We're gonna try them out and see how they work. Um, I made little 3D printed brackets for them as well. Uh, so the antennas will stay on here, right? There's screw holes for the antennas. I've made holes so that you can tighten the screw and these will get stuck up over here as well. We do have, you've seen in a previous video, a lowered uh, lowered ceiling, if you will, on here. That's that's the same profile of this. It just gives us an extra um, uh, little bit there. Does eat into a little bit of headroom, but we've, everybody sat in this so far and there's tons of headroom still. And having the possibility of having lights up here and the antennas uh, is really handy. So we're going with that. Just in case in the world of tomorrow, we decided that we didn't want this overhead thing. I made sure that everything up here got painted exactly the same as everything else. And we're being super careful with this top area, just like everywhere else. So we're not messing this up. Um, of course, there are some nut plates here, but you know, we can clean that up if we decided we didn't want things up there in the future. What else? We did decide to put the ELT antenna inside the aircraft. 
Uh, per the manual for the ELT, um, we believe that they're, you know, our interpretation of the, the manual is that they're okay with uh, composite aircraft having the ELT antenna inside the airplane. So I am happy with it there. Um, it's, this part of the airplane is composite, so I'm happy with the, the LT antenna there. Again, this is one of those, it's it, it seems really hard to find a good spot for the LT antenna on, on these airplanes, considering all the others' antennas, and it's a trade-off, right? You have to figure out where you're comfortable putting your antenna. Um, of course, the best spot is on the top, on top of the metal fuselage. Uh, that's, you know, where it goes. Uh, but if you can't make that happen, there are other ideas. Let me scooch to the back. A little messy over here. We're still figuring out this the the wiring here. You, if you look down, the, there's a bunch of wires coiled over there. Um, but uh, transponder over here. There's the transponder tray. Uh, the ELT right here. ELT is not plugged in because as soon as you plug in the ELT wire, it actually activates the G switch on the ELT. Um, so I just don't want that on. But it's in place uh, so that we can figure out wire wiring and things like that. Um, the antenna is coiled up over here. We're just keeping it safe with stickies again and zip ties. And we're trying to secure everything um, with Adele clamps where we can and zip ties uh, pretty much everywhere, right? Just to keep everything from rubbing, from moving, from bumping into things. Um, and stuff like that. So uh, here are the tubes, right? The two tubes for the side and the one for the middle. Wires coming this way, antenna wire is going that way. Uh, the magnetometer is over here, um, which is where uh, Stein uh, has had good luck with it. This is the Stein mount for the for the ULT. This is a little flimsy right now because nothing is riveted, right? Like this, this whole area is not riveted, so everything's a little flimsy. Uh, we hope this will stiffen up. Um, I have seen some some folks create a bracket here. I don't know that a bracket from here to here does anything uh, because this part is what is going to be moving. Possibly a bracket from here to here, but I, I was reluctant to do that because I didn't know the exact angle this was going to be at once everything got riveted. So decided to leave it alone. Anyway, so uh, back to here. So I have a little ground block on this side. Some items I'm grounding back here. I'm trying to avoid ground loops, right? Like ground loops are what's gonna cause any noise that we're gonna hear um, is likely from ground loops. So I'm only grounding stuff here that makes, makes a ton of sense. Uh, so for example, the yaw servo, uh, the USB ground, uh, sorry, the tail USB ground. So that if there's a USB plug in the back for a camera, it's gonna be there. Um, Things like that, right? So not not a ton of stuff. It just looks like a lot for, for some airplanes. You should see the front. Uh, not a ton of stuff. Uh, and we also have fuse blocks over here. Um, this is unswitched and this is switched. So the unswitched goes directly to the battery. Uh, anything that's powered here is going to drain the battery. So you gotta be, we, we, we're being really careful about what goes here. The only things that, uh, I'm putting here is there is an endurance bus on the front uh, for our electrical system, which goes directly to the battery. It's unswitched. There's a switch over there. Basically, it's everything has gone crazy. Uh, our last ditch, well, second to last ditch is, you know, we're not getting power through the mass solenoid. The mass solenoid died, whatever, right? Uh, endurance bus um, turns on only the... PFD, the G5, the engine, and the engine management uh, system. That's it. It's all you need to get the airplane on the ground. <laughs> um, there is also, uh, we're using PMAGs. Uh, so one, the left PMAG wire goes back to here as well, unswitched. And I believe there's a third one here. Oh, and the uh, alternator two field um, also is right here. Uh, so... All right, unswitched. Um, yep, the, the the switch on the on the front, alternator to field, uh, PMAG, left PMAG, um, and the last thing that's going to go here is the alternator to uh, power input. Um, it's either going to go here or I might actually go straight to the um, unswitched side of the 
Phalanoid. Undecided yet, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what makes sense. But again, not a lot of stuff, right? Like this is stuff that you don't want here. Um, and then on this side, this is just switched power. I wanted to have power back here because it didn't make sense to run stuff all the way forward for, for example, you know, the tail USB, right? I don't want to run wires all the way to the front for tail USB if they can hit here. Um, same thing for the, the USB for the rear seats. Um, the, what is this? Limo for the rear seats. It's the headset jacks. We, we're using Bose uh, powered headset jacks um, for the rear seats there, uh, and things like that. So very simple. Nothing, nothing fancy there. Uh, we are using an EarthX battery. Uh, we've been very happy with EarthX in the nine, so we've decided to use them again. And a gentleman on um, one of the Vans groups online was 3D printing little spacers that fit the that fit the battery perfectly. So. Uh, we sent him a few bucks. Thanks for, you know, they designed it and printed them, right? He said he was happy to send us the design as well. Um, but uh, if he was printing them for a few bucks, I was, you know, yes, you, you deserve a few bucks for that and save me some time. So uh, there's that. Um, this is the power going to the front of the airplane. Uh, it's not crimped yet. Uh, there is a sticky right there that uh, is curing right now. You can see it's still in its little bracket. It's curing and that's what's going to hold this this cable so that it's out of the way of everything. You've seen this in another video. Our cylinder for oxygen goes over here. We did add uh, some caterpillar over there so that the cylinder is not rubbing into any metal. Um, <laughs> and uh, some of the wires here are still loose because we're, you know, in progress still. Um, you'll see over here that we're, we've already ran the oxygen tubing, their uh, poly tubing, I believe, for the O2. Um, we haven't terminated it yet. I'm still trying to figure out terminations on this, um, but that should be going in soon. And uh, I have an antenna. This is the, the main GPS antenna up here. We haven't figured out antennas yet. We are talking to uh, the usual antenna vendors to see if uh, one of them maybe wants to, to work with us and uh, help us out with antennas and we're really excited to you know get the, the antennas sorted out um, that's coming soon but yeah this is this is wiring in our super messy uh, workshop um, I would say we're a couple of weeks maybe from being done with um, the interior wiring I would maybe a couple of weeks uh, there's a lot of like little loose ends like this stuff. Um, I haven't actually figured out how we're going to convert this into metal. I might uh, use send cut send. I've used send cut send for other pieces that they see and see reasonably and expensively. Um, yeah, we're finishing running um, the oxygen. We're finishing running some of the electrical. The antennas are run. I just need to like, route them into the panel. We need to run the antennas up here. I'm waiting to hear back from Garmin on, on some of the things on there. Uh, it's really tough to get a connector through here. So we're gonna snip the connector off and uh, re-terminate the connector on the other end. And unfortunately, one of the wires uh, is not labeled with what kind of wire it is, what kind of cable it is. So we're just, I like, couldn't figure that out. So yeah, this is it. Uh, Windows are going on pretty quick, pretty soon. You can see the, the windows are trimmed and, and ready. The windows are actually right there. The, they need to be cleaned up and uh, trimmed out. They're actually trimmed. They just need to be cleaned up and then glued in place. Uh, so we'll be working on that probably next month at this point. But yeah, this is where we are, making a ton of progress and uh, having a lot of fun doing it. Uh, Post your questions in the comments. I'm always interested in seeing what uh, what I could do a little different, a little better, what ideas you guys have, and uh, we'll take it from there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.